with so much in the news about how COVID-19 has spread, whether it's droplets or aerosols or what do those terms even mean and how do masks work to help you, I thought I'd go over some of the basics. To do that, we have to think in terms of the size of viruses and particles. So let's, let's back up, start at a big level and move down. An average human head might be about seven and three quarters inches wide. But because we're going to be looking at very small sizes, we need to look at the metric system version of this. So we might think of a human head as 20 centimeters wide, but even that isn't looking close enough. Human head is 200 millimeters wide, but even that is not small enough. So let's look at the level of a one thousandth of a millimeter. That's called a micrometer. So the head might be 200,000 micrometers wide. Conventionally, we call the micrometer the micron. Micrometer, micron, same thing. Now let's look at the ha hair on that head. So there's a hair on top of a 200,000 micron head. It's about 50 to 100 microns. Let's zero in on that a little bit. There's your 50 micron hair. It's about 0 0.002 inches. Now let's look even more closely. There is a 50 micron human hair. We're using this to show the relative size of a droplet. And a typical droplet that would come out of the nose or mouth when you're sneezing, coughing, or even speaking might be about five microns in size. In fact, the size ranges all over the place. Environmental scientists refer to any type of particle that stays suspended in the air for any length of time as an aerosol. That can be moisture, like comes out of our faces, or it can be powders or smoke or anything that hold that isn't, uh, isn't air itself that stays in the air. But in medicine, we make a distinction, and it looks like this. We tend to call anything that is five microns or larger droplets, and anything under five microns we call aerosols. We do that because it helps us classify infectious diseases. Infectious diseases that are spread by droplets are spread by particles that tend to come out of the face, meaning the nose and the mouth, and fall to the ground fairly quickly. Diseases, usually viruses, but not always, that are spread by airborne droplets, by airborne aerosols, those are called airborne diseases because those aerosols can go great distances and last in the air a long time. We want to look at the virus particle. To do that, let's blow up this 5 micron droplet. And we want to look at a single virus particle. Now we call a virus particle a virion. That's a single particle. Here it's shown blown up because I wanted you to see it. But in fact, it's really small. It's about 0.01 to 0.05 microns. That means that five micron droplet, or any droplet, can carry a few, a handful, or it can carry a hundred, and in some cases, potentially thousands of virions, thousands, or hundreds or thousands of virus particles. How does this play out in the real world? Imagine this is a person who has a viral illness and the virus is contained in the, in the fluids that are going to come out of this person when they breathe, when they sneeze, or when they cough. That's called droplet spread. And with droplet spread, if you are close enough, the droplet 
lands on you, gets in your nose and mouth, and you can become infected. It is also possible for droplets to land on surfaces. In some settings, the virus remains viable in that droplet, and if you touch it, you can then pick up the virus on your hand and take that to your face. We call that fomite spread or object spread. Now, aerosol spread looks different because those particles travel a great distance. They can hover, so to speak, for minutes to hours and carry infectious particles to unsuspecting people who will then inhale them and become infected. Here's how it might look in a building. Two people are co-workers and one of them is infected and coughs or sneezes or speaks loudly or sings and his or her buddy then can become infected. One of the reasons we talk about maintaining distance is that if these two people were apart, it is more likely that the droplets will fall to the ground and eventually either dry up or be cleaned up, and the person on the right would not be infected. Aerosol spread works differently. Now our infected person coughs, sneezes vigorously and many times. And guess what? Those particles can spread not only to the person six feet away, but if the ventilation system is not filtered, those particles can hit other people as well. That's a general description of virus transmission, but what about the SARS-CoV-2 virus? The SARS-CoV-2 virus is the name of the virus that causes COVID-19. It's the virus that people are calling the coronavirus. We think that all roots play a role. We think droplets play the major role of spread, but it's pretty clear that in the right circumstances, there is airborne transmission. And it is likely that sometimes fomites, meaning you touch something and take it to your face, it's, it's possible that that can happen as well. There are three basic kinds of masks, respirators, surgical masks, and consumer masks. The respirator is technically called the filtering face piece respirator. The most common one you'll see is called the N95. These are certified by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. And as long as they are fit properly, they block essentially anything you would worry about. But being fit properly is the trick because the seal has to be airtight. Indeed, in healthcare settings, when people get their N95s, other people check to make sure that they're airtight, called fit testing. These are very hard to find these days, and they really should be reserved only for healthcare providers dealing with sick people. You will sometimes see N95s that have exhalation valves. These are really designed for the industry that has dust particles and uh, wood particles, things of that nature. It wasn't designed for healthcare. I could have SARS-CoV-2 right now and be spreading it and not know it because I don't have symptoms or I won't develop symptoms. So you don't want a mask that allows your breath to come outside. So do not use an exhalation valve. By the way, a ventilator is that machine that exists in hospitals that help you to breathe when you can't breathe on your own. Those are not respirators. This mask is a respirator, sometimes called a respirator mask or sometimes called a mask. This respirator is the KN95. Now it's okay, it's good. It's just not as good as an N95, assuming that it's made correctly 
and that you can get a good tight fit as shown by this pink line here. You need a good tight fit and it's a pretty good alternative for average Joe, you and me. These are certified and made in China. They are readily available. And the only real warning is to watch out for counterfeits. The FDA keeps a list of KN95 masks from China that it thinks are okay. You can see the website here on the slide, but I will also include it in the description to this video. When using a respirator or a mask of this nature, be sure you get one with head bands, preferably two, one that goes over the top of your head, one that goes behind your neck. If they have ear loops, you cannot possibly maintain that pink line of uh, air tightness. They'll still be good. They're still much better than nothing. They're better than throwing a handkerchief on your face, but they aren't going to be airtight. And they're fine for you and me, but they should never be used uh, in healthcare. Surgical masks. Surgical masks are FDA approved and they're for medical use. Their principal value is that they protect the wearer against fluids. It also serves to protect patients from the exhaled breath of a operator, a surgeon, doctor, etc. That's mostly relevant for bacteria rather than viruses. They come in different levels of filtering that really won't matter to you because you really shouldn't be using these masks. They really should be left for healthcare use. Consumer masks. There are many styles. Uh, the Olsen style is very popular, although because when you talk, it pulls that upper part down across your nose, it often is a very ineffective mask if your nose becomes uh, exposed. I think these are the best choices for masks. Uh, I tend to use a KN95 if I think I'm going to have a higher risk situation. You'll see a lot of ads for face shields. If there's a cloud of virus containing particles, they're just going to come right up into your nose. In fact, there's something called the Bernoulli effect, which increases the rate of flow sucking those right into your face. Now remember, one of the reasons we wear masks is to protect others because we may be infected and not know it. The face shield does nothing to protect others. In general, face shields without masks are not recommended if your concern is getting COVID-19 or spreading COVID-19. Obviously, face shields used with a mask are very important if you were around sick people. That's why doctors and nurses use them in hospitals. So let's look at what happens if a person's wearing a mask, but they are infected. The droplet spread, hopefully a few droplets may fall out, but they'll fall down and not be spread. And many of the droplets will just be caught with the mask. With aerosol spread, Again, you hope these small dot droplets just come out of the places above the mask to the side and the bottom, and the velocity will be greatly reduced, so they won't spread as far. Plus, a lot of them will simply be caught in the mask. Now, that doesn't mean all of them. It's certainly possible that an aerosol leaves the mask and gets spread, but they will be fewer in number, less likely to cause an infection, or if they cause an infection, less likely to cause a serious infection. And for people at a great distance, they probably won't be exposed at all. What about the other direction? Now here, we have a person wearing a mask, but the infected person is not. Droplet spread occurs just like it did before. It can land on objects and perhaps be picked up by hand, but when it hits the person, hopefully it hits the mask and will not make it to the nose or mouth of the person.
in aerosol spread, the aerosols are still out there close to those people, but because they have masks on, the hope is that most of those particles will land on the mask and not be inhaled. Now, I'm not saying that's a foolproof. Indeed, uh, there can be particles that make their way in through the sides and openings of the mask and get in, but you're playing odds. Less particles will get in, less chance of infection, less chance of serious infection. In the ideal situation, we might have something like this. Now everyone wears a mask. Droplets spread, drops to the ground, airborne spread, mostly reduced velocity around the infected person, Infectious particle lands on person number one, but gets blocked by the mask. And the people at a distance, they may get one or two that hit their, their faces or their masks, but it's less likely they will get a large dose. So please, wear a mask anytime you are outside in public. Keep your distance from other people at least six feet. Avoid any large group greater than five people, and wash your hands or use hand sanitizer frequently. That's it for now. See you next time.